your presentation there. Uh, Jason, we have one county case on the dock for this evening. That is uh, RED 2017-06, Russo, William, and Robert, uh, William and Robert, William and Barbara Roberts, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. They're asking for a change in zoning on the subject property from a plan development to currently uh, houses one residence on it uh, to general commercial for the construction of a retail establishment for a dollar general. With that, um, you can see the only update that I have to offer you since the work session is we were able to get a copy of the updated survey which shows that very small, I think it's 9,000 square feet that will come from the Roberts property along with the entirety of the subject property, which brings it to about 1.6 acres. So I wanted y'all to see that in detail. We got that in uh, late last week. Beyond that update, you have our recommendations before you. We'll try to address any questions that you have. I believe the applicant's agent is here should you have questions for them. But beyond that, that is the only update we have. It's just a, a updated copy of the survey we looked at. Commissioners, any questions for staff on this request? Yes, just a quick question. Mr. Blair? Has there been any, uh, I see that the property is near other residences. Mm -hmm. Has there been any? We have had one phone call um, from, I would say, an adjacent property owner in opposition to the request. Um, other than that, no. And, and I think it was across the street in opposition, not adjacent to. But that's the only public comment we've had we've had so far. And I checked on that just this afternoon or this morning. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Um, I know the so the, the public access to this property will actually be on that additional 9,000 square feet on Board Pond. Is that the access? Yes, I don't think that the state, New State and Highway is the state route. I don't believe the state will grant them driveway access. Okay. And so they are proposing their entire access to off the Boring Pond Lane, which is to, to the east. No, I'm sorry. I don't think that's correct. It shows there's a storm, a pond, a stormwater pond in that additional triangle. Mm -hmm. Right, so the, the access is through Boring Pond. Right, I don't think it's through the 9,000 square feet. It's but not it's, through the... Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. The access is from Boring Palm, but just not that 9,000 okay. square feet. Any other questions for staff? There being none, is anyone here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward this time. Good evening, sir. Take your name and address, please, sir. Hey, uh, Bill Nigel, 1007 North Patterson Street. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. As you can see, this is a combination of uh, two parcels, the hard corner and the picking out. Know, about 9,000 square feet to the north. Um, the entrance will be off the Warren Pond Road. I think that should have a site plan in the package. They do. If you don't have gas emission copies. Um, also, the combination plaque and the rezoning plaque should be in there as well. We got that to Jason a little late. But um, this, after, after going back and forth with some discussions with Mr. Davenport, you know, when we originally filed the application, um, really the applicant was, was just interested in something that will allow, zoning that will allow retail use that. And so that is allowed under CC and CG, which is community commercial and general commercial. Um, community commercial is allowed under the comprehensive plan and future development map, but given, I think I believe the uses mm -hmm. and that, that are allowable in CC and those that are allowable in CG, uh, the county felt, and we felt too, that general commercial zoning might be more appropriate um, because it provides more protection to the neighbors. And so that's why you have CG instead of CC. Um, a few other points I want to make, and I'm happy to answer any questions y'all would have. The, the house that's there now on the hard corner is actually going to be moved by Mr. Roberts, uh, who the applicant's picking up that 9,000 square feet from. I believe he has some additional property North on Boring Pond Road, at least going to do that house to, potentially that house to. Um, and 
also in the contract with Mr. Roberts, there's also a requirement to conduct a privacy fence on the northern end of Prop 51, as additional buffering for the major um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Be like the, 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 you're talking about just 127 feet of that new pipe, is that where the fence would be? Just curious. Would be the, that's right, 127 foot. Commissioners, any questions for the presenter? Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of the request? There being none, anyone here this evening wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward this time. Yes, sir, please state your name and address for the record, please, sir. Ira Lumley, 5015 Boring Pond Road. That's my driveway that's going to be directly across the street from this Dollar General that's being put in this uh, residential area out here. That road was originally paved, I believe, in the early 70s, and that's the, the road there is nowhere near the standard width of any road that you pave today. The new pavement on the extended part of Boring Pond is much wider, stripes, reflectors, all that. That part of Boring Pond will not accommodate that. Now, in the 70s, the county took away part of our family's property who paved that original section of Boring Pond Road. Now, I'm not up here saying that I'm totally against that, but I'm not interested in somebody coming in there and taking more of my property to put a big yellow store up in front of my house with all these lights that are going to be shining all night long, 24 hours a day, in our neighborhood. Now, I just, I, I'm just i totally against it. I'm just not interested in having a store that Dollar General right at the end of my driveway to get out of my property on the board and pond road. And like I say, that section will not accommodate an entrance unless you're going to widen that road or you're going to resurface all that and have to. Now, you're naturally not going to take property from the guy that's wanting to build the store to give you more tax money. You're going to take it away from me, the disabled vet on the other side of the street that pays reduced taxes. And I'm not for that at all. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody have any questions for present? Yes, I'm just curious, just a comment too. So the, the board pond, what, does it accommodate? The right now, the survey shows that that's an 80-foot right-of-way. I do not anticipate their driveway to require any additional right-of-way for what they're proposing. Can I ask a follow-up? Please. Is there a requirement that there the, the new store's driveway have to align with the Boring Pond Road extension? I don't believe it's a requirement. It may be a preference from the engineer. I would have to check with him on that, but I don't believe it's a requirement. So what is the classification of that road? That, that section of Boring Pond is a major collector, minor collector. Not not the main, not boring pond itself, but the extension. But the gentleman is referring to what I understand is the Oh, line. across the street? Yes. Is that a is that a counter or what what kind of a road is that? It's a private road. There is no county maintenance, so that's a private driveway that does not even circle around the way the map shows it any longer. I think the gentleman is correct, Commissioner Blavin. I think it's a private dirt road. Mm -hmm. It's not maintained by the county. No, ma'am. I think that's correct. Is that your home in the top right corner? Uh, that that's my saying? parents' sir, home. Sir, sir, excuse me, excuse me. Would you step back and close sure, sir? Sure, sure. No, that's the original homestead. My parents are deceased now. That house, our house is a little behind that home okay. that's showing there. And uh, there's four families that use that driveway to come out of there on the Boring Pond Road back there. Jason, can you pull the aerial view back up? I can't. I was just trying to see if I could see his house from it. You can't. I think we're off the map on it. Yeah. Okay. Our house is a little further back from the old wooden frame home that's standing okay. there in the photo. There's a pond behind there, a man made pond, and then the house is on it. So, 
Commissioner Glenn. So the main concern that you have really is the the cars headlights onto yes, your property. Oh, we As moved into the county get away 50 something years ago to get away from the city hustle and bustle. Now you're putting it in my front yard. You know, that's so, my concern. You know, I don't want to, after being out there over almost 60 years, pick up move because you can't stand all those bright lights. Of, you know, we live in the country for the peace and quiet. You know, we're, we're not interested in all of this out there. I don't have a problem driving to town anytime I want to go to the grocery store or Sam or Walmart or anything else. I'm just not concerned. I'm not interested in having that at the end of my property. I mean, none, I'm sure none of y'all would want a Walmart at the end of your driveway. Dollar General or anything else. Any other questions? Well, let's sit down again, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question for staff. Commissioner, yeah, we do, I'm sure. <laughs> Jason, mm -hmm. the current driveway to that property right now is off New State so, no. Where is the current driveway to that house? Oh, to the house? To the residence, correct. Yeah, it looks like it's off New State. Look off New State. Commissioner, I do. I think that house faces to the south. Mm -hmm. And the current driveway is off the main mm -hmm. highway. I think the question at this point that I would like to know is if the applicant has considered um, directing their main entry off that highway. You know, they can address German. I I believe they'd consider it, but I think they, they would be happy to try to address it if the commission wanted to ask them directly. I really thought it was a concern about the distance to the driveway to the intersection of Boring Pond and New State a lot of state route. I don't know if the DOT would be their decision whether or not they would grant the permit for that or allow that driveway to be expanded to a commercial driveway because it would need to be. Um, I thought there was a concern about the distance to that driveway. But ultimately, that would be a state call and I would probably take a conversation with the engineer. It's a good question. I just, I've only heard concerns about the distance to that intersection. Mr. Chairman. Jason, would it be possible to move the drive the one that is currently on New Statenville, would it be possible to move it more to the west? Mm -hmm. I, I think we can ask. It would just be the responsibility of the DOT to, they're the one who would make that decision. Um, I know it, moving that driveway shifts it a little bit closer to that existing neighbor to the west, but I think ultimately it will be answered by the DOT to see if they would have an alternate access. Would they allow that existing driveway to be deconstructed and then reconstructed further west on the road? I think that would be up to the applicants and the DOT. Um, if I can continue. We've had cases where we place a lot of attention on exactly that um, impact of headlights mm -hmm. shining into the property across the street. And I don't recall what how that had been resolved in previous cases, but are there any tools, are there any any things that the applicant can do to actually address that to minimally impact the property across the street? I know we've had conditions before that talked about the lighting on the subject property being directed you know, downward or away from adjacent properties. I can only think of one case where we talked about the um, specific alignment from the headlights from a driveway and I think the ultimate resolution was to put a condition on it to talk about where the drive the driveway actually faced to try to minimize that impact because in the former case it was for the orchards north of Stone Creek if you remember there was a concern about the traffic basically shining lights into the back of people's houses and I think they ultimately negotiated between their engineer and the county engineer about where that specific driveway would would face so they could minimize some of those impacts so that the driveway didn't face into someone's basically backyard was the, the example there. That's the only one I remember us going as far as negotiating for that alignment. Mr. Chairman, is it possible to ask the applicant the question
my guess is that um, for a retail development, that entrance is going to be too close to that intersection. It'll be a two um, but, and I, I, would, I would imagine that. Billy, it's not it's not it's not it is. It's just really low. You might want to scoot it up, Billy, just so they're sure they can hear you. Sure. Y'all hear me better? I think probably closer to you, sir. <laughs> Here? No, I don't think he's on. I mean, I am. I have it all the way up. I do have it all the way up, y'all. We have lights on there. Just talk loud, Bill. No, speak up. Just speak up. I'm trying to tell you loud. Is that better? Um, to the issue of access on State and Ohio, I am almost positive that has been addressed by my client, I and mean, that's going to be a Department of Transportation issue. That's a state highway. My guess is that access to a development off of state highway is probably not going to be granted because it's too close to that intersection. Well, I mean, typically there would be some sort of negotiations of how you actually do the maintenance, the ingress, ingress, egress, and so forth. So I, I think it would be beneficial for us to actually please know that that's been really seriously considered and that that's been really exhausted sure, as an option. I, honestly, I can't answer that question okay. tonight, um, to tell you the truth, because I just can't answer that. Um, I will say that the access point, as it is on the site point now, I mean, there is a convenience store on that corner across. And, I mean, the way I see it and the way I look at it, the access point is pretty far south towards the intersection. And I think most of the headlights, if you're concerned about headlights and all that, it's either going to hit probably just to the north of that convenience store. Um, I don't know if there's a house on that piece of property that it doesn't look like there is. Behind the store, yeah. Behind the store? Yeah. Jason, would you mind putting up the site plan on the screen? Who would if I could, man? I have it in your packet. I'm just going to have it in the Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I know you just mentioned it, but any, any lighting condition need to be attached? I mean, we, I think that's at, the, that's at the pleasure of the commission. I know we've done conditions about lighting on site before. I think we would need to be careful about the language about aligning the driveway. And I thought how we solved that last time was we said your engineer has to comment and it has to be basically approved by the county engineer to make sure those distances work with that concern and we could work on that language we've i can think of one case where we've done that with the commission and the county commission report okay no. Thank you. Thank you. any other questions for presenter uh, okay richard wells mr knight uh do you know what the operating hours or the store would be? Yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. I think the typical operating hours are anywhere from 8 a.m. to 6, 6 p.m. on Dollar General. Uh, uh, <laughs> and it's not 24 hours. It's not a 24 hour store. It's 8 to 10. <laughs> 8 to 10. I mean, it varies by store. All the ones that I've dealt with. It does vary by store. Now, some of them went, they go at 8, sometimes 9, 10. I think holiday season. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a 24-hour store. Uh, is there any way it be reasonable to have a condition that after hours you turn the lights off? Like through the night? And I don't know exactly what she might have. You know, except for maybe security, some low level of security light or something. Written the light you need bright outside lights? Because then we're getting into placing requirements on the tent, on the national tent, and I don't really know what they would agree to. I mean, I, I think they're going to have their standard practices in terms of what lights are kept on, how long they're kept on. Now, I think what could probably be done is, you know, the lighting, Jason, I think we've worked on some language of this, this back before, where, you know, you have lighting that shines only on the parking lot. It's not dispersed to the neighboring property owners. And there are lights or attachments to the lights. I think we can use to do that. Um, I don't know. 
terminology escape. Uh, I think that would be something. Is it directed yeah. downward in the way from the next property right. or in the next? We've done that similar language before directed. I mean, that's in our code. We could refine that for the county commission, but that's the general intent is shielded and directed down and away, which is the site lane. We've definitely done that before. see with this coloring, but that is the proposed driveway location for Foreign Pond and Airways New State. Bill. So that, I know it's not in the presentation, but at least that's a copy of it. See how you're going to put a Dell General with its main entrance and exit off of Boring Pond Road when the road will not accommodate. I just don't see that. You're going to have to resurface something. The drainage ditches, the two ditches at the end of Boring Pond where they butt up to 94 now, you get a big storm, you got all kinds of water in those ditches. Now all that water is going to run off of that asphalt parking lot of that Dollar General. Where's that water going to go? And the road is not the standard width of today's highways. I just don't see where you're not going to be able to disrupt our property there for the entrance and exit off of Boring Pond Road. It's not the standard width. Just, just in one issue, sir, that, uh, that they, they are taking care of their water. They do have a detention pond that they will feed all the asphalt, all the water off the asphalt into that detention pond. So that, that will alleviate one of your concerns, sir. Yeah. I appreciate you, sir. All right, commissioners. Any, any further questions for staff at this point? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. We've had um, the language before has been all exterior lighting shall be directed or shielded to avoid illumination of adjacent properties. <coughs> Something we've used before. So I know the question was asked earlier, Jackson, but you haven't heard anything from the folks to the west concerning this? I have not. Is there a fence to be on that property line also? The property line to the west will be the developer's choice. Unless it's conditioned otherwise, the developer could do a potentially a 30-foot buffer, or if they do a solid opaque fence, it could be cut down to 15. Okay. But, but my understanding is the 127 feet is going to be a fence. If that's their own development condition, then that will be something they do. Okay. But unless the commission wants to require it, we could either have a landscape buffer with no fence or a condensed landscape buffer with an opaque fence. Okay. Right. No questions asked? 
But at this time, I didn't, the landscape buffer is for which edges of the property? It will be to the north and to the west. If no further discussion at this time, I will take a motion on this case. Uh, it, it is closed. The public part is closed at this time. Uh, Thank you. Okay, ma'am, it was my mistake. I didn't cut it off. Please come forward. I'm just curious now you said that they would people gather the store said they get over a thousand signatures. Were, were they aware of the meeting tonight? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, they were, but some are uh, farmers and they were uh, till late night. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Perhaps this is something where Carmela is an interpretation, but if you list an adjacent zoning district, they don't list PD. So they list R1, R21, R10, they list various districts. They don't list PD. So to be sure, if you wanted to make sure there's a buffer required on the north and the west, which I would be in favor of, you probably would want to condition that that just those two borders would be buffered. I think the intent was there to do that, but I think there may be a loophole. I don't think the applicants are trying to get away from buffer, but it's something I, I did not realize that PD zoning was not listed. All the residential zoning districts are, but the PD zoning is not. And it would be typically a commercial use next to that would be a 30 foot buffer or a 15 foot buffer if they put up a fence. But if you were in favor of a condition to say, you know, a buffer that meets UDC standards on the north and the west, I think that would be adequate to cover that loophole. Thank you for checking that, Jason. Commissioner Jackson, this new stuff that Jason has just brought to our attention and other things we consider to talk about this evening, and this time I will take a motion on this case. Everybody 
for purposes of land use, which is what our job is here in the Thank you. And I recommended approval of this as an appropriate land use. Uh, so based on that, uh, in, as our charter has paid commissioners to determine whether or not the land use is proposed is appropriate, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend approval. And I'd also like to, with that motion, um, put conditions that any lighting be directed or shielded to avoid elimination of the adjacent property. That we also have a buffer, either the 30 foot buffer, as Mr. Davenport mentioned, or a 15 foot buffer with no paper fence as an option. Um, and uh, if possible, if there's any way we can eliminate any lighting late at night, any lighting that would be appropriate for uh, elimination or reduction during night operating hours, uh, I think the applicant would consider that to try to work with the uh, local people as well. So we have a motion from Mr. Wiles with the conditions attached. Do we have a second on the motion? We have a second, Commissioner Clavin. Commissioners, before we vote, do we have any further discussion on this case at this time? There being none, all in favor of the motion as stated with conditions, please say by raising your right hand. X5, all opposed, say by raise your hand. Stay. I'm all in one abstain. The motion passes this evening. Yes, sir. All right, guys. I appreciate each and every one coming out.